Good evening and welcome to Mystery for the last of our series of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I'm Vincent Price. Last week, we met Holmes's arch rival, Professor Moriarty, whom Holmes called the Napoleon of Crime. Moriarty had been a professor of mathematics at a small English university, but dark rumors began to circulate about him, which caused him to resign his position. He moved to London and very quickly became the leader of organized English crime and the most vicious and skillful of Holmes's opponents. Perhaps Conan Doyle introduced Moriarty as a way of satisfying his boredom with Holmes. For after 23 stories, the author had become very tired of his fictional hero. He said, I fear that Mr. Sherlock Holmes may become like one of those tenors who, having outlived their time, are still tempted to make repeated farewell bows to their indulgent audiences. This must cease. Professor Moriarty shared those views, as we'll see tonight in The Final Problem. On a trip to Switzerland with his wife in 1893, Conan Doyle recorded in his diary, we saw the wonderful falls of Reichenbach, a terrible place, and one that I thought would make a worthy tomb for Sherlock, even if I buried my banking account with him. Later that year, he wrote The Final Problem, sent it off to the Strand magazine, and noted coldly and laconically in his diary, killed Holmes. City employees went to their work wearing solemn mourning bands, while less dignified readers stormed the offices of the Strand and sent the author hundreds of nasty letters. There will only be a temporary interval in the Sherlock Holmes stories, the editors of the Strand rather hysterically hastened to assure their readers. But Conan Doyle stood firm. I have had such an overdose of him that I feel towards him as I do towards Patty de Foie Gras, of which I once ate too much, so that the name of it gives me a sickly feeling. Conan Doyle pursued other writings and became a world leader in the movement of spiritualism. Eight years later, when Holmes finally made a reappearance, crowds stormed the printers, unable to wait for the magazines to hit the bookstalls. Conan Doyle was knighted in 1902, and many felt, perhaps not entirely incorrectly, that this honor was due as much to the reappearance of Holmes in The Hound of the Baskervilles as to the author's public service during the South African War. Christopher Morley, the founder of New York's Baker Street Irregulars, spoke for generations of grateful fans when he commented how ridiculous that the author should only have been knighted. He should have been sainted. Until next week and a brand new series on mystery, I'm Vincent Price. Good night.